when I was a youngster, I was the um, oldest of four brothers. Uh, we used to spend lots of time climbing trees, wandering around the farm, playing in the hay, um, getting muddy. And I grew up as a farmer. There was a farmer who worked in Japan and he brought over some, some Wagyu. And I heard about it without taking much notice really. But at the time, the price of beef had hit an all time low in this country. So I thought there must be a, a better way to do this. And so I researched into Wagyu and I took the plunge. I had no business plan, um, no markets, but I thought if, it, if it's gonna taste better, then it will find those markets in due course. Japanese tradition has it that Wagyu cattle were fed on beer to stimulate their appetite in the hot weather. So what we've done is repeated that here by feeding local beer to the cows. We have a, a fantastic relationship with Monty's Brewery who are just three miles away. When they're making a batch of beer, there's always a little bit of waste which is too yeasty for human consumption, but it goes down perfectly well with the, with the cows. What I've found by experience is that the cattle prefer the paler, lighter ales, much like myself. Um, it's all a matter of personal taste, I suppose. Come on, come and get your beer. Come and get your beer. My first bull was born in July of 2007 and, and the rest is history. We chose Abramovich because one bull here in Wales can manage 40 cows no problem. Attempting to produce the best quality beef in the world is a, is a tricky business. It's like a long chain, there are many links in the chain. From the, the breed of the animal, the feeding, the transport, the slaughter, the butchering and the cutting, the hanging process, to the chef who prepares the meat itself. There are so many links that at each point in the chain there's a possibility that something could go wrong. And to me, the weakest link in the chain is when the animals are killed, they have to be transported to a strange place and meet strange people. Slaughter and the transport is a, a stressful business, so we're trying to make these animals as happy as possible so by massaging the animals and making them familiar with human contact, then the theory is to try to minimize stress to the animals. Every step along the way has to be done as correctly as possible. I think we're on our way to doing that. It's nice to be able to say that my Wagyu has been sold in Harrods, in Michelin star restaurants around the UK but it, it gives me even more satisfaction to say to people it's in my local pub, in my local village. And that, that is very rewarding indeed. Wagyu has the quality of having marbling, which is little flecks of fat within the meat itself rather than around the outside. And when that meat is cooked, the fat melts within the meat. It's the fat that spreads through the meat, which gives a, a juicy, buttery taste. And I think it's nice that people can have a choice. They can buy mass produced or they can buy small and local. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. It's been wonderful to meet people outside my own immediate farming community. But it gives me the opportunity to do what I want to do, which is to be a farmer. But also to reach out to get the possibility that I can be in, in any home anywhere in the country, which is which is nice. <laughs>